everyone, welcome to my kitchen on this very cloudy and gloomy day, but today I'm talking about one of my favorite subjects, my dogs. But before we get to my dogs, I know there are a few of you here who are new, hopefully because you are coming over from my friend Natasha's blog or Instagram feed. So for those of you who are new, hi, my name is Marnie and I am the proud mother of three dogs, also two humans, but more proud of my dogs kidding. We have, the oldest is currently Mimi. She is a Westie, a West Highland White Terrier. And I have to double check, but I think she's turning 11 or 12 on May 5th, my little Cinco de Mayo baby. Dog number two is Wrigley, as in Wrigley Field, home of the Chicago Cubs, my favorite baseball team. And he is also West Highland White Terrier, and he just turned eight. And Mimi is 11. And then the apple of our eye, he just has a huge personality and he's really hard to ignore and he's the one you see the most in my socials and on YouTube is our baby Rowdy. He is three and he is a Weimaraner and his name is short for be a Rowdy Rebel in honor of Ole Miss. All of our dogs have some sort of sporting name. Mimi's name is short for minor league major sensation. So that's if you're new. If you are a current viewer or subscriber, then you know who I am, but you don't know who my friend Natasha is. She goes by Nashville Tash over on Instagram and her blog is Hello Happiness. We met years and years ago at the Reward Style Conference in Dallas and we just clicked. If you haven't followed her or seen her posts, like she is just a ray of sunshine and I adore her and she's also a dog mommy. We thought it'd be fun to do a collaboration. It's a little harder to do when one of you is a YouTuber and one of you is a blogger. So I'm doing this video and Natasha did a blog post and we're both posting on Instagram. So I'll put the links to her Instagram and blog below and go check her out and tell her I said hello. But today we're doing five tips for new dog slash puppy owners. And of course there'll be a bonus one because I can never follow my own rules. So tip number one, crate training. Some people have a big problem with this, but we have always crate trained our dogs and it has been the most advised thing from every obedience trainer, every vet, the AKC, shelters, rescue agencies that we've worked with. Everyone recommends crate training. We have been dog owners since the day we came home from our, well, I grew up with dogs as did my husband, but together we have been dog owners since the day we came home from our honeymoon. Crate training is key. Dogs are basically domesticated wolves. They have a denning instinct. They like to feel secure. They like to know they have a place to go. I am not suggesting you keep your dog locked in a crate all day long, that is animal abuse. But what I am saying, especially with new puppies or a dog that is new to your family, a crate is invaluable as you're teaching them the rules of the house, housebreaking, and it's a place for them to go when they feel a little bit stressed out. The kind of crate completely depends on your space requirements, the dog space requirements, your budget and what have you. We have done everything from your traditional wire crate, which we, we like, to the more airplane kind of plastic ones. And we've upgraded to the wooden style. They're just prettier because we keep our crates in our bedroom because we are crazy people. Our dogs are now crated when they eat because we have three and they all like to steal each other's food. So they go in their crate to eat, there goes one. And they are crated also when we leave our house because especially the wine runner can get in a little bit of trouble. But the concept of crate training is very similar to babies who are in the NICU who are put on a schedule right away. It gives the dog a schedule. And I wanna run real briefly through some housebreaking tips. It's really important to utilize that crate as they're learning how to be housebroken. Let's start with the morning. So if your dog is not housebroken yet, I highly recommend letting them sleep in the crate through the night. So first thing in the morning when they wake up, which may not be when you wanna wake up, but that's why I recommend keeping the crate in your room. As soon as they wake up, when they were little, we'd scoop them up so their feet don't even touch the ground and take them right outside to potty. As soon as they've gone to the bathroom, then they can come in, they can play for a little bit, you feed them, maybe give them 15 minutes or whatever, and then back into the crate they go. Wait about 30 minutes, see if they've digested, take them out of the crate, take them outside. If they've gone to the bathroom, then you have a window of playtime available and you don't need to worry so much about running back and forth. But if they haven't gone to the bathroom right after they've eaten, back into the crate they go, wait about 15 more minutes and try it again. Obviously you can start spacing this time out the older they get. And I also recommend that you take them out every hour on the hour 
as they are learning how to go to the bathroom outside. None of this is my idea, particularly a book that helped us so much. Every time we get a new dog, we reread it is um, by the monks of New Skeet. I'll put the book in the description box below. It is fabulous. It's old, but it is a classic. Similar to the concept of crate training are baby gates. Anytime a dog has an accident in the house, destroys a piece of furniture or something else that you didn't want them to eat, I feel like it's operator error. It's not the dog's fault. It's you letting them out of your sight unsupervised and that's when they get into trouble. So baby gates, I feel are key and we still keep ours up. We prefer the layout of my house to keep our dogs in the back of the house, away from the, the front of the house where we're not hanging out as much and we really don't want the dogs upstairs out of sight. I don't know what they're doing. My kids, when they're home, leave things that are toxic like socks and, and food and I don't want them getting into it. So it's just easier to keep them corralled into the kitchen, breakfast room, family room, master bedroom, where they generally hang out, where we generally hang out. And you can go crazy and spend a lot of money, which we have done, and then you can you know, find a more budget-friendly option. I have that gate right behind me that separates the kitchen from the dining room. We have another gate. I will insert a video that will crack you up. Um, that is really good from keeping the Westies on this side of the house. At that, at this point, our wine runner can jump over all the gates except for the one to go upstairs. So he has a little more freedom. Now let's talk about appropriate chew toys. Obviously this is breed dependent and how strong of jaws they have. Every single dog we've had has destroyed all the toys. We do not have dogs that are sweet and have their loveys and don't destroy them. They rip them to shreds. My terriers are particularly vicious and they love to gut any soft plush toys. But they are a few and this one is really well loved. <laughs> we have two of them. This at one point was a fox. Now it's, it's just sad. But it is a plush toy from Kong. I think it still has a, whoop, oh, yep, still has a squeaker. Uh, the ears have been chewed off, but what I like about this is that it has, the inside is not stuffing, it's rope. So when they do tear into it and gut it, as is inevitable with my crew, there's no stuffing all over the place for them to, to choke on or to get all over the house. And it's also a great tug toy. Now you did hear the squeaker. There was a squeaker in the head. They ripped that thing open and the squeaker came out. So I do recommend supervising your dogs when they have toys uh, unless they seem to not destroy things because that is can be chokeable. I immediately took the squeaker away and sometimes I'll slice it open myself and pull the squeakers out. So I try to find the non-plush toys, the non-stuffed toys, rope type toys. They're a little safer. And then for the chewing part, all three of our dogs love this thing called a knuckle bone. Basically, it is a cow's knee joint. It's disgusting but it's great for them, it's safe, it disintegrates in their stomach, they don't have to worry about any pieces getting stuck in them and, and piercing their digestive tract or hurting them. Do not give your dogs rawhide, I think everyone should know that by now. Another great toy, this one's about to get thrown out, is the Benabone. They make a variety of shapes and sizes. There was one that was more like a um, tug toy shape. Some dogs are getting their jaws stuck on those. They've retooled those so those are safer, but we like this wishbone one. This should not be digested. So this has gotten way past the point where they should be allowed to keep eating it. You can see it's starting to flake off and stuff. So it's time to throw this one out, but this keeps them busy for about a month or two before it gets to this point. So these are great. Back to the house training. This has been invaluable and it's bells at the door. So this one has a little ring. It hangs on the doorknob at our back door. I got this one at Walmart during the holiday season. This is not meant to be something used for dog training, but you can buy bells, you know, off Amazon or Michaels and hot glue them onto something or sew them onto something. I'm sure I can, if I can find some that are already put together like this, I will link it below, but it's really easy to train your dog how to let you know when it's time to go to the bathroom. So like I said, we hang that on our door, the back door that leads to the backyard. And when they're puppies, every time we go outside, I'll hit that bell and I'll say, outside, you need to go outside. And you lift your voice up at the end like you're asking a question. Outside, my dogs are 
outside right now, otherwise they'd go running. And they do associate that very quickly with the idea of going outside. And within a week or two, they will go over there and either smack it with their foot, our taller dog hits it with his nose, and even if I'm in another room, I hear that bell, I know they need to go outside. And then my last official tip is about food. Now I'm not gonna tell you what kind of food to feed your dog because that is like telling you who to vote for or how to raise your children. People get very heated about those things. But what I am suggesting is once you settle on a dry food, this is only gonna work if it's dry, something that you like, your vet approves of, your dog actually eats, my recommendation is to use the kibble as treats as well. First of all, it's just more budget friendly. You're only buying one thing. And the less you introduce into your dog's digestive system, I feel the better. They, they do better when they don't really have a, a varied diet, I will say that. But it's just something, it's easy then to just have a bag of the kibble ready to hand out as treats. We have a treat jar kind of in the background that I picked up at, um, at home, I think, or home goods. And it just makes life a little bit easier. And you don't always have to go shopping for extra treats. They're there in your house. And then my bonus tip, if you're going to focus on one obedience command, it's not sit, it's not stay, some sort of recall command, because that could end up saving their life. And on a less important level, it can save you from standing outside waiting for your dog to go to the bathroom when it's really cold or it's really late or what have you. So whether it's come, here, whatever command you choose to use when you are calling your dog, that's the one I feel is the most important to use. Like maybe one day you open the front door and your dog runs out. And if they have that command nailed and you yell, Okay, he's not here. Rowdy, come! No matter what he's doing, he stops on a dime, turns around, and comes back. No matter what. I've done it to him when he's chasing a squirrel, he will come back. That's why it's always important to have those treats handy. Oh gosh, here he's coming. That's too funny. I don't know how he heard me. But we take our dogs to the dog park. Sometimes there's a dog that's rowdier than our rowdy, and I want him away, and I yell, Rowdy, come! And he comes running. We were really emphatic about him learning that command more than any other, and it's really the only one he knows. Um, the Westies, not so much. They're, they're not as driven to running around, but wine runners, once they take off, good luck catching one of those. And then we have a pretty big backyard. We are on half an acre, and sometimes, you know, he's gotta go to the bathroom. It's two o'clock in the morning. It's pitch black out there. I'm waiting. I can hear some creepy animal noises down the other side of the fence, and I want the dog in the house, and I wanna go back to bed. And that's when you yell, howdy, come, and in he comes, unless he's doing his business, and then, as soon as he's done, he comes running. So nobody needs to be sitting out there at two o'clock in the morning while you're hearing coyotes waiting on your dog, no. Anyway, I hope those five plus tips were somewhat helpful. I do have links below with some of our favorite dog products and things that we've used for years and years and keep on repurchasing. If you have some tips that you'd like to share, of course, feel free to share those in the comments below. And please, more than anything, go check out Natasha. You will fall in love with her just like I have. Thanks, Natasha, for this collaboration. This was a lot of fun. I can't wait to do more with you and see you in person maybe in August. Fingers crossed. Anyway, for all of you, whether you're new or you've been around for a while, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to spend it with me. And I hope you're all well and staying well. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.